So before release 15 of uh, Research Data Australia, which went live last April, default search would return research activities, um, services and parties, as well as uh, research data collections. There were already more than uh, 40,000 ARC and NH and MRC grants that were in the RDA system, so you would often find grants appearing uh, when you did searching. But now that the default search for RDA only returns data collections, we needed to have a separate discovery service for exploring research grants and projects. This is a pilot service because we didn't have enough resources at the time to do thorough user require, requirements analysis and design. Um, so we have a working service and, and we hope that you'll give us a lot of feedback and we'll do a, gather that feedback for an improved design next year. The ANS registry aggregates lists of research grant descriptions that have been provided by funders and it also aggregates lists of project descriptions which have been provided by research institutions and agencies. Currently we have 45,000 grant descriptions just from the two major funders, ARC and NH and MRC, and we also have 2,000 research project descriptions. The research project descriptions have been supplied as activity records um, in RIF-CS format by our data contributors. They may have been manually entered or they could have been harvested from contributor feeds, along with the way we harvest other objects like collections, parties and services. There's a good reason to have both grants and project descriptions. Uh, for the same study, as the information provided by the institution can be more current and may contain more information than the grant description which only has the information that was supplied during the submission process for the award. Also, there may be many research projects which are either internally funded or funded by bodies who don't supply grant information to ANS. So that's why we collect grant descriptions from funders and we collect project descriptions uh, from the institutions. So now I'm just going to have, give you a quick look um, at what the service looks like. Uh, you can see uh, from the main research data homepage, Research Data Australia, there's a Grants and Projects Explore service and on that you will see that your search is restricted only to grants and projects. There's also to browse um, by the same subject groupings that you will see on the homepage little bit of information about what the service is and also at the bottom there will be a link to all of the funders who supply grant information to us and if you follow those links at the bottom you'll get more information about uh, what they have supplied, uh, terms of use for the data, how current it is, uh, those sorts of um, items of information. A simple search uh, for, for example, protein interactions. Uh, notice also you can search within various fields instead of all of the fields, the same as you would um, on the home page. And there's also the possibility to sort the search results. Default is relevancy, there's alphabetic, but you can also sort by uh, the date that the project commenced or completed um, or by the funding amount for the grant. And you can see here if we look at, um, say we can filter the result to projects rather than grants, so those will be the ones supplied by the institutions. And you can see, for example, that first one has been supplied by the University of Adelaide and it's linked to a grant because they have used the grant identifier for their, their project description. Uh, if I go into there, you can see that this is the information that they supply. You can see the related data, the data that was output from that study. You can also switch and see the actual grant record, which is what was supplied by the Australian Research Council. But again, because they are linked, you can also, we are also able to see, if we go to the ARC, that the ARC's grants have funded this uh, creation of this data set. And returning to the search, you can see you can restrict to grants or projects, you can restrict by, filter by the status, you know, whether it's a finished or it's still active, the field of research subject categories, uh, the institution that's managing the project or the grant, um, who funded it. Within those funders, there are various funding schemes. You may want to restrict, for example, to studies uh, like discovery projects and exclude things like equipment grants. And also you can 
filter by um, the funding amount range, uh, the commencement date and completion date range. So that's enough. I don't want to go on any further because I have little time. So going back to my presentation, I'm going to anticipate this question about why do we bother. We are RDA as a service for discovering research data. It's what we're about. Uh, why do we bother with these um, descriptions of research activity? And that's because uh, project descriptions provide extra context for the published data sets. Um, the metadata about data sets may not be very complete and you may get more information when you read about the study. Also, the vast number of research projects that have been conducted um, over the past X number of years um, don't have published data sets, although many of them have produced data that could be uh, useful and reused in other contexts. So this is one way perhaps of discovering research that may have produced data that you could use, although the data itself has not been published. The grant identifier can pull together related data sets and publications. So by publishing grants and assigning a persistent and unique identifier, we have the ability for that to be used in the entire research sector to try and connect together various aspects such as publications and data sets and other outputs. Also, the funders of research uh, would like a way to see the research outputs that have been funded by their funding programs. And a side benefit um, is that before this, there was no one-stop shop for Australian research. And this could be useful nationally and also internationally because it could be added to global research discovery portals and people will become more aware of what research is going on in Australia. In this uh, climate of increasing collaboration, publications and data sets that result from the same grant could still be deposited in different systems. These together in a national or global service requires that they all use the same grant identifier. Now funders like the ARC and NH and MRC have always had their own identification system and grant IDs and they are the ones that have traditionally been used in the acknowledgement sections, for example, of journal articles. Uh, to identify the grant, but they don't resolve to any information about the grant. So the research sector needs a globally unique identifier which is persistent over time and resolves to a description of the grant and supports linked data queries. And we chose the Perl identification system for this. Currently the identifiers resolve to a view page in Research Data Australia, but as funders develop their own online systems, it is possible for us, for this research grant identifier to actually resolve to a view page in their system. And you can see that the way the grant identifier is formed um, is that always the funder acronym uh, comes before the grant ID. So for example, we can direct, redirect grant identifiers of this form to view pages um, in the ARC's online systems rather than our own. We also have a, a, an API, and why is that important? Um, there are many systems where access to research grant information is useful. For example, an institutional research portal may want to display all the research grants with which a, a researcher has been associated during their career or all of the research grants their institution has participated in, even though they may not be the administering organisation. An API allows these systems to interrogate RDA to display, display this information within their system so they don't have to come to RDA. Also, systems that support the submission and description of research data and publications could also use the API to provide lookup and validation for the grant so they don't have to have just a free text box where mistakes can be made. Additionally, analysis and reporting systems that want to analyse research funding patterns can also use this API as a source of information. There are two options for connecting data collections to research grants. If your institution supplies project descriptions to RDA with connections to uh, research data outputs, for example, then if the project description contains the associated grant identifier, then that's all that's required and the connection will be made. The other simpler option, if you don't supply those project descriptions, is just to add the grant identifier to the metadata about the data collection as one does for a publication. Of course, if the funder has not supplied grant information to RDA, uh, then there will be no Pearl Grant identifier. However, 
it would still be very beneficial to include the grant by just selecting the funder from a drop-down list uh, for Australian funders and then just add the grant ideas free text and, and also possibly a title and description. Uh, so this information is useful and perhaps later when the funder does supply us with grant information we'll be able to match the grant ID and connect it to a Pearl grant identifier. So you can see here in a system, say a research management system which manages all of the research projects in an institution, data collections may be connected to a project, but if the project has the grant identifier, we can also make a link between the grant and the data collection which is very important for funders who want to see the outputs from their research grants. Just as an example of what happens in institutional systems, um, the following screenshot is from the University of South Australia's data management planning system. And you can see here they have a section for adding in uh, the funding source and they have a drop down to select the funder funding scheme and the identifier. And if they use our API in this form, then this can be a drop down to select the scheme and this can be a, a, um, a lookup to um, type in either text or the ID for it to be validated and make sure and return the actual Pearl Grant identifier. But at the moment, because they do put this funder number here, or sorry, the, the grant identifier here, just the NHMRC one, NHMRC one, when they're creating RIFCS for us to harvest into our system, they can turn that into a Pearl grant identifier because they know who the funder is and the grant ID. Connecting a publication to a grant is already happening um, in most institutions. The Council of University Libraries has already developed guidelines in conjunction with the NHMRC and ARC for tagging open access versions of publications resulting from grants with the Pearl Grant identifier. And as these research publications are harvested by Trove, ANS is able to harvest that connection from Trove so that we can include uh, publications as well as data co collections um, when viewing a grant in RDA. And there's a Trove guide which explains how to do this. Here's an example from the QUT institutional repository when submitting or uh, cataloguing uh, a publication they can put in the funding body which again comes from a drop down list of funders, funders and then type the grant ID and they plan also to use our API to provide a lookup for the grant ID as well rather than have it as free text, possibility of error. And just looking at some example grant views in uh, Research Data Australia, here's some ex uh, one from the NH and MRC with researchers that's linked to a party record. You can see the pearl. There are also uh, other examples where you will see related data collections and ones where you will see related publications. But unfortunately, I've lost the link, so and I'm running out of time, so I won't demonstrate them here. But those links that are in the slides, if you follow them, you will see those records. So we're only at the beginning stages um, of building this service in terms of the content. Currently the, um, the grant metadata that's provided by the ARC and NH and MRC includes investigator names but no identifiers. If this was provided, for example an ORCID or an LLA party identifier, the grant could be linked to information about the research that's been provided by their institution and to all of their grants and outputs, um, no matter who the funder was. And also, the grant data they provide doesn't include um, institutional partners in the grant, only the single administering institution. So we are continuing our engagement with them to hopefully get more information in the future. And we're at the start of a process to expand uh, the registry to include grants from other funders. For example, we're currently working with the Department of Environment for them to supply information um, about their research projects, uh, sorry, the research projects they fund, for example, in the National Environmental Science Program. And they will require the resulting data from those um, research grants to be published and also to be linked to their grants um, by the institutions who deposit the data. In that way, they will be able to see an RDA the outputs from the work that they fund. Most data collection descriptions 
do not contain the related grant identifiers at the moment. Most research project descriptions that we have in our system do not contain the Pearl grant identifier. Uh, and this is where we want to make some progress over the coming years. There's limited coverage in RDA of research grants from funders other than ARC and NHMRC currently, and again, we hope this changes. And there's limited coverage in RDA of research projects, past and present, that's been undertaken at Australian research institutions. We only have a very small number of them at the moment, and usually those are ones where the data has been published. So. Our message is, from this presentation um, and our continuing message is that research institutions can now provide us with descriptions of all of their research projects and we would like them to supply as much as possible. More funders will be supplying grant information to RDA. Institutional systems can have a look up widget for the quick selection and verification of grants and inclusion of the Pearl grant identifier rather than just free text input. And we would like as many people as possible to give us feedback on how we can improve this service. Uh, there's a list of references um, that I've added to the slides which will be made available. Thank you very much and over to you Susanna. Fantastic. Thank you Monica.